Oh boy. Okay. Well, let's hope we don't die horribly here. The day of the siege had finally dawned. We had arrived at the Demon Lord's castle, and we were as ready as we could be. Many armies bearing different banners and colors washed over the grounds before the castle, ready to rush in and lay waste to the Demon Lord and the remainder of his forces. All of us shared a common enemy, and, upon his demise, would all finally know some form of peace. Even during the roll call of the Major Generals, the air became full of determination and pride. Mirth! Avarice! Nadia! Bjorna! Aradum! Each name called became a mark on history. This was the war to bring freedom or destruction to the demon world. If the Rebellion didn't win this fight, then this war would never end. If the Rebellion won, then the world would become united in a hopefully peaceful rule. Hopefully. The hour before the battle was set to take place. My thoughts instantly ran back to our final meeting in Lilith Castle. Diana had pulled the leaders and us together, instructing us on how exactly to proceed. I was not gonna have like time choices of like dodge, duck, strike, you know, run away. <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. Sero, you will be joining Shadow and Sergeant in the front, taking care of the main army head on. I expect that you will come out of it alive. Aww. Yes, my lady. Rabbit, Fay, you are in charge of range attacks and defense. We cannot allow any of those blasted imps getting to us from behind. Yes, ma'am! As Diana looked to me, I grew slightly fearful. I had to get into the Demon Lord's castle, but how exactly did Diana plan on getting me there? You and your fiancé will take the side route straight to the castle. Wait, huh? We've organized our army to have our strongest on the front lines and against the tree line, giving us a side route for you to make your way straight to the castle. If anything trickles into the side route, you'll be able to handle it. However, there is something I must ask of you. What is it? If you are indeed attacked, you need to defend your fiancé the entire way there. Do not let him use his energy. Interesting. Absolutely not. When you get to the castle, I will be fighting one-on-one -on -one with the Demon Lord. If something should happen to me, then I need you to take over. She is not ready to fight him and you need to be at full strength to finish him off. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Just, you know, have my back, James. Let me do it, unless, you know, something terrible is going to happen to me. Save as much of your energy as possible. Besides, she can handle herself just fine. I trained her myself, after all. Hehe, <laughs> good point, girl. I stared, listening and reaffirming the order. I couldn't lie, I was nervous. However, I was determined enough to see this through. I looked over at my fiancé with a confident smile. I got this. Don't worry. Despite the worried look in his eyes, he nodded and held my hand, trusting me and my decision to agree with Diana's command. Diana rolled her shoulders and looked at the map draped over the war table between us all. Her gaze pierced into the parchment as the aura around her body pulsated in anger. I will fly ahead and meet the demon lord head on. No matter what happens, I will not allow that monster to live. The pure determination and anger in her voice practically sent a shiver down my spine. She was set on seeing this through to the end, and I was sure that she was willing to even die if it meant taking the Demon Lord with her. The remaining Incubi and the Wives were asked to stay behind the army and guard the main base, where Rabbit and Fay were stationed. They needed as many eyes as possible in the back of the battle, so the four couples were perfect to keep things in check. As they agreed, the meeting ended and the mental preparation had begun. The idea of the upcoming battle scared me, sending waves of fear and worry up and down my body in response to the thought. Nervous? Huh. I would be lying if I said I wasn't. James smiled and held my hand tightly before bringing it up and kissing over it. No matter what happens, we will end this and you will see the human world again. You have my word. I listened to him speak before nodding, taking in a deep breath. <sighs> Everything would be okay. We would be fine. I had to believe in myself and get us to the castle when the time was right. Oh boy. 
Like a beacon, our forces became the banner of hope and strength for the rebellion. At the sight of Diana, many soldiers bowed or stared in awe and inspiration. Maybe it was her presence, or maybe it was for what she stood for. But as Diana stood at the cliffside of the mountain, the air became full of energy and power. My fiancé, Rabbit, Fay, and I stood behind her, as Diana stood on the ledge of the cliffside, addressing the rebellion for their final battle. Her voice echoed across the field, booming and reverberating through the air like thunder. Melites! Et hoc liberati esturei tramcun tuis omnibus conversiris! Stovo biscum reducitic vos ad spem! Nocte! Lava mor arkem! Hostium sanguine! Wow. That was very well read. <laughs> what did she say, Batori? <laughs> I mean, James? She said that she stands with them and will help them gain their freedom from their enemy. Tonight, the Demon Lord's castle will be bathed in blood. Ah. Really? <laughs> I don't think she means it literally, but she's riling up the soldiers for war, as she should. James, you sound like you're in demon form right now, which would make sense. I nodded as I stared at the back of Diana's head. A part of me felt a little intimidated and jealous of the power she had. She really could make armies bow to her and obey her every whim. At the same time, I knew that she was doing the right thing for this world. Ele dio dominati sun nostri, nostri stret il mitere profundissimum inferni detractos. Rabbit and Faye stepped forward and held their hands out toward the castle, focusing their energies and forcing the stone walls around it to crumble and dissolve down into the earth. Diana summoned her saber, letting it shine brilliantly as the purple taint over her skin began to twist and turn. Before my eyes, the taint on her back took shape, lifting off of Diana's skin and morphed into a set of demonic wings. I could only stare, jaw dropped, as Diana's body lifted off of the ground and began to fly over the legion, slowly gliding towards the castle. To war! To battle! At her final command, Diana's wings pulsated in the air, flapping gracefully as she swooped down and forward. She was charging and flying for the castle walls, saber bared and ready to spill blood. As the armies below began to bellow and march forward, Rabbit took hold of my shoulder and turned me away from the castle to face her. Come, we must hurry. Understanding the need for urgency, I nodded and rushed forward with the rest of the incubi towards the slope down the mountainside. Everything is in order. Sergeant Diana's guard are at the front lines while Shadow is with his legion to the west. What about our route? We've done what we can to keep your way clear. We'll try to make sure the battle won't break through the path. I nodded, feeling the need to rush nip at my heels pushing me forward. My fiancé seemed to agree, gripping my hand and walking at my pace alongside me. However, as we finally arrived at the forest line, Faye and Rabbit stopped, looking back at us. Straight through here. The sound of the war will always be on your right, so do not get lost. Mm. You'll be fine, though. Just follow the tree line. In sync, my fiancé and I nodded in acknowledgement before turning to see the other brothers and their wives. So, this is it. Princess, brother, we'll see you in the end. We have faith in you. You'll make it there, and we'll return to the human world soon. I guess the boys don't have to change the demon form here. <laughs> Kick his dead body a couple times for me, all right? Right in the head. You got it, man. We'll be right here rooting for you and watching your back, okay? We'll finish this and rush in as soon as we can, all right? Make sure you kick some serious ass. Show that old goat what he gets for messing with you. We'll win this. We know we can. You can do this. And we'll see you soon, okay? I smiled despite the nerves running through my body. I held onto my fiancé's hand and gave it a hard squeeze before receiving one back in kind. We'll finish this. Then we'll go home. The group nodded before I slowly turned and looked into the tree line, took a breath, and rushed forward. Matching my speed, my love followed, weaving through the trees behind me to not lose sight of me. The journey became quick as we made our way through the dark. The sounds of the war roared beside us outside of the tree line, causing me to cover my ears a bit from the vo volume, but I shook my head and pressed forward, not wanting to become distracted. 
The goal was to get to the castle. I had to focus. We made our way through the thick of the forest, dodging each tree and root we came across. I could tell that something was ahead, causing me to excuse me, causing me to grip my circlet and fill it with my energy and preparation. As I expected, we were rushing towards a group of imps who were about to jump into the war fray from the side as a surprise attack, making me smirk. The surprise would be on them instead now. I quickly pulled my circlet off of my wrist and gripped it, forming the large golden whip from its handle and lashing it at the group of demons ahead of me. The chains quickly wrapped around their necks like a snake and quickly tightened, breaking their necks. They couldn't even let out a scream as their voices became crushed by my whip. As they fell, I continued forward, deforming the whip and chuckling, and, and chucking, not chuckling, <laughs> and chucking the circlet in front of me, letting my barrier circle my form. I was already going to say, man, Angel seems to be quite okay with just, like, killing people. <laughs> She's like, whatever, they're imps. Deal with it. My incubus kept up the pace, surprised to see what I had essentially done. Well, yeah. What was that? I grinned back at my love, giving him a wink. And then he's like, which one of us is the real monster? <laughs> a gift from a succubus. I continued to run forward, heading straight into another group of imps, and rushed past them, letting my circlet go to work. As my barrier brushed against them, the circlet quickly raked up the imps' backs and shredded through them, making them fall forward from the pain. <coughs> what a horrible noise. The imps fell as the others ahead of them turned and became shell-shocked at the sight. Must have been a big surprise to see a human cut down a group all at once, but I wasn't so friendly and merciful, especially in this war, as I lunged forward again and took hold of my circlet once again, forming the whip and lashing at them. My whip wrapped around one's neck and slammed into the others, causing them to fly out of the forest and into the battlefield before my whip vanished and returned to being a barrier around me. My Incubus, despite probably being surprised at my carnage, followed as I continued forward, fighting through every imp that came in our way. I had lost count of how many crossed me, but I didn't care. All I cared about was getting to the castle. Are we at Mordor? <laughs> Is this not... <laughs> Is this not the way to Mordor? <laughs> By the time we reached the end of the forest, there were a slew of dead bodies behind me. I stood at the tree line, panting and feeling waves of adrenaline and lack of energy run through my veins. I panted for air, slowly focusing on calming down as my energy quickly depleted from its adrenaline-filled high. The circlet around me quickly vanished, no longer able to maintain its form without my energy, and reappeared as a simple accessory around my wrist. That was all I could do before my energy was expended and a wave of exhaustion rolled through my body. I began to fall forward, exhausted. My fiancé, however, quickly rushed forward and caught me in his arms. Whoa! Are you okay? This is really the time for this. H huh? I looked up to see James staring down at me with a deeply concerned gaze. We were safe for the moment, so I merely smiled up at him with a nod. I'm fine. I promise to protect you, like you protect me. James let out a small laugh, kissing my forehead and hugging me to him. That you did. I'm so proud to call you mine. I hugged him back, feeling relief that we had finally arrived at the castle and were about to rush inside. As we slowly pulled away, James lifted me up and helped me to my feet. Will you be alright? I nodded, shaking off the exhaustion from my mind. I was ready to end this. I looked up at the castle gates and felt a rush of determination run through me. Let's go finish this. With that, James and I rushed forward into the castle. The final battle had begun. The ringing sound of clashing swords greeted me and James as we sprinted into the castle and towards the main hall. James placed a hand in front of me as I spotted the battle waging at the foot of the throne days. Diana and the Demon Lord slammed their swords against each other over and over in violent repetition, with Diana leveled to her tall opponent in flight. Just from the force behind their swings, you would think that their swords would break and bend. The sound of their steel, however, could not cover the snarls that erupted from each of them as they pressed against the clash between them. It's over, you brute bastard! I'm glad she's still alive right now. We'll see about that! Really? With a heavy grunt, the demon lord pushed his sword forward with a pulse of red energy, causing Diana to fly back and slam into a pillar with a painful thud. Ah! 
Diana crumpled to the ground, her wings instinctively folding in against her back from the impact. However, it only took a second for her to recover and look up with a rejuvenated glare. Vaulting off of the ground, Diana flew at the demon lord once more and slammed her sword into his, a large burst of purple flames erupting from between their weapons. I will send you to hell where you belong! James and I watched in silence as Diana and the demon lord danced their deadly duel, not wanting to get in the way of either of their rage. After all, James was merely a backup, and Diana seemed fine so far. For some reason, however, as I stared at Diana, something about her hits looked almost effortless. Like something was guiding her sword to land each strike. Was she that skilled in combat? Was it the muse back again? After a flurry of deadlocks, Diana finally managed to swing her sword at an angle, slicing the back of the demon lord's hand and making him drop his weapon. Ah, you! The demon lord quickly stepped back and reared his other hand back, forming a large red orb in his hand. However, as soon as he thrust it forward, it began to dissolve and dissipate in the air, vanishing completely before it reached Diana's body. What? Diana stared in shock at the occurrence, taking in that his attack didn't hit her, before she slowly grew a smirk on her face and a golden glow over her blood-red irises. Looks like you're all out of energy. With another angry growl, the demon lord repeated his action, only to stare in disbelief as it evaporated into the air. It was large enough when in his hand, yet it vanished all too quickly. Something was wrong. Diana didn't seem to care as she lifted her hand back behind her and formed a large purple orb in her palm before shooting it forward. The orb slammed into the demon lord's chest and pushed him back against a pillar harshly, forming large cracks in the stone at the impact. It's over! With her battle cry, Diana gripped onto her saber with both hands and flew forward, charging to skewer the demon lord through the chest. As she began to fly forward, I gasped at the sight of white feathers slowly painting over Diana's demonic wings. What does that mean? Angels were here. Wait! Diana wasn't listening. Her eyes became completely glossed over in a gold color as a strange white glow began to emanate from her, like, uh, from her form like a holy light and guided her forward towards her intended victim. Within a mere blink, Diana had run her saber through the demon lord's chest, piercing through his heart and impaling him against the pillar. <laughs> James and I could do nothing but stare in shock at what Diana had done and what was happening to the succubus in question. Her body left off, let off an all- Blech. Sorry, I'm so excited I can't read properly. Her body let off almost an ethereal white glow as she snarled into the demon lord's face. May Satan take you and tear you apart in the pits of hell. My body shuddered in fear at the sound of her voice. While she naturally had some sort of demonic resonance as she spoke, something else was laced into her voice, giving it almost a celestial lift in tone. The demon lord's eyes glazed over and soon lost their light as he ever so slowly went limp over the blade embedded within him blood slowly dripping from his mouth and onto Diana's forearms. Well, at least my curse is broken. Diana, however, released the handle of her blade and glided back, shaking her arms to rid them of the demon lord's blood. Despite what I normally expected from Diana, the succubus didn't seem to care that her mortal enemy had fallen at last. She didn't even seem to care that her wings had become angelic and covered in beautiful white feathers. If it wasn't for her tainted demon skin and horns, I would imagine Diana at that moment to be confused as the angels I imagined from the human world. The reality of the situation, however, was apparent. Something was wrong with Diana. It is done. It is over. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what she said about muses. Like, they're, they come from a particular city or kingdom in heaven, right? So has her muse taken over and that's why she's got, like, the white wings? Question mark? <sighs> I looked to James, seeing his cautious but deadly glare burn itself onto Diana's form as she looked up at him, eyes still glazed over in a gold glow. It isn't truly over, is it? Diana stared at the pair of us for a moment before lowering herself onto her feet on the floor and letting her new angelic wings fold against her back patiently. With an almost sickeningly sweet smile, Diana lifted her hand towards James and beckoned to him. Ah, uh, this is the Stone Destiny stuff, isn't it? You are correct. You must take your throne, Reistrau. 
My anger flared at the sound of his true name escaping her lips, but my soul began to quiver in fear. Diana was being controlled by angels, and now she seemed to be an instrument for James's destiny. James, however, remained at my side, glaring hard at Diana still with a hand across my body in protection. You do not have permission to use my name with such familiarity. Then why do you say that? I am the queen of the demon world now, and you are my betrothed. And those angels just, like, they're... They really want the Diana Raystro ship to sail. They're, they're just ship... They're just, you know, shippers. They really want this ship to... <laughs> we ruined it with Angel. Diana ran her hands through her hair and over her horns, dragging them down her neck and over each curve on her upper body seductively. Yeah, this is definitely not Diana. My mind, body, and soul are completely yours, as is the domination of this world. I share these pleasures and power with you, with the purest love from the bottom of my heart, as your true, universally intended bride. Universally intended? My oh my. James reached his hand back and took my hand, knowing that her words were digging into my mind with edges of betrayal and annoyance. I knew James wouldn't accept her, but I also knew that this was not Diana, so who knew what the angel controlling her would do next? Diana tilted her head to the side, slowly lowering herself onto her knees and stretching her arms by her sides, burying herself to us. Unless you desire me to be your slave, I will happily give you the throne and eternally serve you until the end of time. Enough! Release her and reveal yourself, Seraph! I gripped James's hand, staring wide-eyed at Diana. She simply chuckled and guided her hands together, pressing her palms between her breasts and leaning back to stare at the high marble ceiling. This child of Lilith is offering herself to you, demon. Yet you refuse to take it. You know my answer. It is a foolish answer. This demoness can become a vessel of power for you, the mother of your lineage. What more can you desire that the human can hope to provide? Stop it! This time, I had to interject. This was both wrong and underhanded. Whatever spell Diana was under gripped her tightly enough to become some sort of twisted submissive to James, and no part of me appreciated it. Not one part. This angel was some sort of sick and twisted being that needed to be stopped somehow. Oh, hello. He's taking up the sword. James finally stepped forward, forming a sword in his hand and staring down at it in serious thought. An angel like you can never understand the desires I hold. So he doesn't have his gun this time, he has a sword. That is because your desires are misplaced. You know deep in your heart that you desire to rule over this world. Your demonic blood craves the power. I watched James gaze deep into the steel of his blade, locking eyes with himself. Still, he continued to speak. It is true that some part of me wishes to rule this world. Some darker, unfeeling shadow of the past that was raised to live and become the ultimate lord of this plane. Makes sense. As James gripped the handle of his sword tightly, he shifted his gaze to Diana's body. My heart knows where it belongs. With the human who loves me as I love her! My heart fluttered in my chest at James's words, feeling every ounce of passion and determination embedded with each sound. Diana, however, let out a dark laugh. Love. How fleeting. Your defiance comes from such a weak emotion. As Diana finally straightened back up, I stepped back from the sight of her eyes. Instead of black pupils, her golden eyes held two dark crosses burning within her lost irises. The smirk on her face intensified, almost like a Cheshire cat's sickening grin. Allow me to show you a power greater than love! With a hard flap of her wings, Diana jutted forward, forming another saber in her hand, and ar arcing it? Arching it? Arching it, I guess? Across James? Her target countered in reply, clashing his sword to hers with a heavy clang. Oh boy. I instantly jumped back, away from the fight, as James and Diana began to clash swords again and again. James's face showed his pure concentration as Diana's cackled and as Diana's cackled in both an insane glee and obsessive desire. Fight however you like! You cannot escape your destiny! I will and you will not stop me! 
The speed of their clash is increased. The rapid sounds of steel beating steel crash through the air like a wave of violent drums. They were equally matched, and neither seemed to be close to giving in. How long would this fight go for? I knew Diana was probably exhausted from the fight, but the angel was working through her, so there was a chance that her exhaustion wouldn't matter. Then again, James had not lifted a finger yet in this war, so he had energy to spare. The entire situation became full of confusion and concern as James and Diana continued to duel without hesitation or need for air. As James took a heavy swing towards Diana, the succubus left back and sank gracefully on her feet, using her wings to ease her descent and stance while she licked her lips. Love is a fleeting game! Those who expect it to bring happiness will only experience sorrow in the end! You're wrong. I was tired of this angel trying to get in between me and James. Enough was enough. I stepped forward, trying desperately to find more energy within me to fight alongside James, but spoke out regardless. You don't know anything about love! I know more than you ever will, human! I have lived for eons serving heaven, and have watched your kind rant and rave all about love and its existence! Diana lifted her hand to her chest, grasping it at it over where her heart was, and almost laughed at me in my words. You humans use love for the most meaningless of things! I love him, I love her, I love this, I love that! You claim love to be a powerful emotion, yet you can't even give it the power it supposedly deserves, as you use it for everything! I've watched that word fall on deaf ears! I've seen lives destroyed, despite love guiding them forward! The mere word has become a throwaway amalgam of letters, used to express minor joy for things that will decay and die in the end! Love is stronger than you think. All right, this is a romance story, gosh darn it. I knew deep down that the emotion of love was stronger than this angel could have ever imagined. This wasn't something I could debate against when I had experienced it firsthand with the man it was trying to take away. Diana laughed and shook her head, guffawing at my exclamation before stretching her arms out to the side. Love is weak! I have claimed the body of a succubus who is full of true love, and not even her love could stop me! She was full of true love? Please tell me it's for Sarah, please, my boy. Actually, we need Sarah to come in here, lickety split. I stared wide-eyed at Diana. She was in love? Even more so, she had a pure and true love? But if love was the factor behind control, then something was off. I shook my head and glared once more at Diana, burying my gaze into her eyes at the angel who was controlling her movements. You controlling her has nothing to do with love. You're taking advantage of her being weak from the fight with the demon lord. Finally, Diana's face melted into a glare as she bared her teeth at me and growled. You know nothing! Less than nothing! Filthy, unclean human! You open your mouth and spout nonsense and forget your place in the universe! I think I might have hit a sore spot. Diana's saber began to glow an unfriendly white color as Diana's hand began to quake holding it. Was Diana fighting back, or was the angel's anger shaking her limbs with rage? I wasn't able to tell. I will erase you! A hard flap of Diana's wings made Diana fly forward towards me, sword held high to rip me in two. However, her blade was met with James's as he rushed up and guarded me. You! James pressed back against Diana's saber, his body glowing a dark gold color in response to her ever-growing aura. Your battle is with me, Angel. I will not let you touch her! With a heavy snarl, Diana pressed herself against the deadlock, leaning towards James and practically frothing at the mouth. I will make you yield! Unaffected by her scream, James summoned a burst of yellow energy forward, knocking Diana back towards the throne days. Diana flipped back and floated in the air gracefully, shaking her head before sneering at James. The demons sprang at each other once more, slamming their swords together in hopes to push the other away or strike their opponent down. Purple and gold clashed through the room, my favorite colors, the speed of their duel growing exponentially with each hit and parry. Watching Diana, however, I could tell that exhaustion was hitting her hard physically. Her hits became wild and thrown by adrenaline instead of with purpose and intent to kill. The angel wouldn't be able to hold on for long. James was putting up a good fight despite this, easily blocking and dodging her attacks before pummeling a barrage of his own, laced with gold energy that burst between their swords at each hit. 
As soon as an opening became available once again, James gripped onto Diana's wrist and twisted it back, making her release her saber with a painful scream and causing him to drop his own sword. Ah! Enough of this! Using the momentum of his attack, James spun Diana around so her arm was almost dislocated behind her and slammed his feet into the back of her knees, causing her to buckle forward and land with two painful thuds. James, however, pushed Diana farther down and slammed her body onto the ground, trapping her arm against her back with a foot and gripping onto Diana's large wings with both hands. <gasps> he wasn't going to rip them off of her, right? With a concentrated glare on the back of Diana's head, his fist tightened around Diana's feathery wings and suddenly sent a wave of golden flames through them. The fire stopped at Diana's back, only consuming the wings in a golden red flame. <laughs> Diana's scream echoed through the room, bouncing off of the floor and walls in a frenzy as she could do nothing but feel the flames engulf her wings. The feathers that painted over them began to burn and dissolve into ash, falling around her. Soon enough, the pain became unbearable enough to force Diana to make her wings vanish back into her skin, where two large burn marks sin signed? Singed themselves? Signed themselves? I'm sorry. Not giving Diana a single ounce of mercy, James dug his foot beneath her body and flipped her over, causing her back to arch in pain from the impact of her burns on the marble. Smoke snaked out from her back as she gasped loudly. As Diana opened her mouth and let out her breath, James quickly grasped onto her neck, squeezing tightly and causing the succubus beneath him to choke. James! Neither demon could hear me as Diana grabbed onto James's wrists and began to claw at them, desperate to make him let go of her. Her eyes began to flicker from gold to their original clear white and red colors, as Diana could do nothing but spasm from lack of air. Whoa, whoa. Stop him! Where's my mouse? <laughs> Wait! I needed to stop him before he killed her. The angel wasn't worth her death. Besides, he could just, like, inhabit me or somebody else. I rushed forward and grabbed onto James's arm, making him look up at me as I knelt down beside him. James, stop it! You'll kill Diana! James stared at me, taking in what I had said with the same surprised look before looking down at the succubus beneath, succubus beneath him and glaring hard. Was he going to kill her anyway? Come out and fight me. With a burst of energy surging through James's hands, Diana arched back, a spray of frothy saliva and blood erupting from her mouth towards the far wall. Yee. James's grip had loosened around her neck, but Diana's body continued to spasm from James's attack. Diana's eyes rolled into the back of her head, finally fading from gold to white as she gasped for air and her body relaxed at last. As Diana's body finally went limp and settled onto the marble, a large white aura of smoke whisked out of her chest and shot itself at the throne dais, settling on the steps and slowly growing taller in place. The white smoke finally formed into a familiar cloaked being who was arched forward with his veiny hands tensed out beside him. Something about the angel, however, seemed different than before as if he had somehow gained energy from being within Diana. You filthy cur! You continue to try and defy your destiny when it is useless! James stood and glared hard at the angel, forming his sword once again in his hand and pointing it towards his new opponent. His body began to glow and the room began to brighten at his golden aura. I have no such destiny to remain in this world. My life is bound to the one I love, not to an empty chair gained through blood. You will have no choice in the matter! Like two bullets, James and the angel rushed at each other and collided with James's sword against the angel's bare hands. I expected James's blade to tear through the angel's flesh, but the steel pressed against the angel's hands like it was grazing stone. The angel gripped to James's blade and slowly began to crush it beneath his hands, causing the magic surrounding it to falter and fade. James and I stared wide-eyed as the angel was able to rip the broken pieces of the sword off and toss it to the side like it was plastic. Determined still, James shot his energy through his sword and reformed the blade, going once again for another attack, only to be blocked by the angel's forearms. Upon impact, the steel of the blade shattered like glass, falling to the ground. Use your gun, man! I am no mere servant of heaven, demon. I am the keeper of destiny, the scribe of fate. You cannot defeat me no matter what spells you conjure. Upon his final words, the angel pressed his hands forward and slammed them against James's chest, forcing him to fly back and slam into the far wall. <laughs> James! 
I instantly began to rush towards him, but found myself being lifted off of the ground by the back of my neck and pulled away from James toward the angel. Gah! No! I grabbed at the back of my neck, feeling the angel's hand grip it tightly and keep my body afloat somehow. His hand felt indeed like stone and concrete, grazing against my skin roughly and almost tearing at the flesh as I struggled. If you're a stone angel, I should be able to just freeze you without by staring at you. If we were in Doctor Who's world. Let me go! I should have forced you to choose from the beginning, demon. This human will not see reason to let you go. But I know that you will see reason in the offer I will graciously give you now. The angel held my body out, dangling me in the air like a doll as I flailed and clawed at the angel's arm. My nails merely scratched against the stone skin as I felt my energy slowly deplete even further than it was in my spirit. Accept your fate, demon, and I will bring her back to the human world unharmed. Refuse, and I will release her to the gates of hell for the devil spawn to ravish. Gulp. As he spoke of James's potential refusal, a large wave of heat burst out beneath my feet, causing me to look down and scream at the sight on the ground. Beneath my body was a large open circle with red flames flaring out of it. Between the flames, I could barely make out the sight of hundreds of hands reaching up to try and stretch themselves through the hole above them and towards me. Each hand burned in red sent waves of remembrance down my body as an image of Malix appeared in my head. My fear only spurred me to flail harder in the hold I was in, uncaring of the friction his hand was causing my skin. I could feel blood gather and dribble from the back of my neck, flesh tearing open from my attempts. James stared up at me, quaking from the fear of the situation. We were far away from him, where he couldn't reach me, even if he sprinted as I dropped. I was left to James's decision. However, hero music started, and something in James's eyes changed. A dark gold painted over his eyes as his body began to float in the air. Let her go! As you wish! A gasp managed to rush into my body as the angel's hand on my neck vanished without a trace. My body began to fall into the open pit below me, a wave of intense heat reaming at my legs, before I felt a pe strong pair of arms wrap around me and pull me forward. What? I looked up to see James gripping me tightly, flying back away from the angel with me in case in his tight hold. As we reached the doorway of the main hall, James landed and set me down, keeping his intense glare on the angel by the throne. As the angel made their way towards us, I could feel the air become colder with each step he took. You cannot smite me, demon! It is useless to try! If I cannot kill you, then I will send you to a place you can never escape from. On James's words, a large set of purple ethereal tendrils snaked around the angel's hands and neck, tugging him back roughly. Are the brothers here? No, it's Diana. Okay, it was either Eric or Diana. I wasn't sure. James and I looked back to see Diana, risen from her unconscious state and glaring daggers into the back of the angel's cloak as her hand connected her to the tendrils around her target. I'm so glad we saved you, girl. It was mildly frightening to see her eyes completely coated in gold, just like James's eyes as she snarled at her now captured victim. How dare you defile me! James, in retaliation, formed a large wall between himself and the angel, pushing him back in time with Diana's tendril pulls. Each time the angel dispelled one of the tendrils on his body, James pushed forward and Diana formed another tendril in its place. It became a team effort, forcing the angel back to balance his feet over the edge of the hell pit he opened. However, despite each rough tug and push James and Diana gave him, the angel continued to balance himself. With a burst of white light, the angel completely dissolved the tendrils and magic wall, jutting upwards and floating high in the air, tense and growling. The two demons, however, wouldn't let him hang around for long. Simultaneously, James and Diana pounced off of the ground and flew into the air at the angel, Diana on her summoned but damaged wings, and James with his new powers. Diana summoned her saber, and James formed his sword, clashing them against the angel's body. The blades didn't break, but simply pounded against the cloak the angel wore as if they were heading armor. The angel became frazzled as he began to defend himself against two opponents, each not giving him an ounce of mercy in their attacks. It was almost dizzying to see Diana and James fly around their target, taking shots at him at ridiculous speeds. Each hit resulted with a loud clang of steel against stone that bounced around the room in an endless but random cycle. 
Watching Diana and James encircle the angel with attacks was like watching gold and purple fireworks going off against the moon. Suddenly, Diana's saber was launched out of her hands, causing Diana to float back a bit in shock, while James attacked the angel head on. <laughs> As the angel knocked back James's attack, Diana swooped up behind the angel and entangled her arms behind his, uh, around his, and locked her legs around his cloak while pressing herself between his wings. What? Next! At her cry, purple and black lightning began to spatter and shake around the angel and Diana, freezing them in the air but electrocuting both. Jinx! No! The incubus didn't falter as he gathered energy into his blade, making it gleam an almost ethereal and godlike glow. No! It's over! With a large shout, James shot himself forward and impaled his sword into the angel's body, successfully ramming it through his body and skewering both the angel and Diana. <laughs> Gold and purple lightning wrapped around the angel, both from Diana's spell and James's blade, causing the wings on his back to burn away into bones, then to ash. The angel's hands slowly began to darken to an ashy black color from the electrocution. James ripped his blade out from his two victims as Diana finally pushed herself away from the angel, leaving him to float in the air for a moment, frozen from the pain. As the angel began to fall, he let out a deadly, a deathly scream before falling into the hell pit below. <laughs> Enjoy being ravished by demons, I mean devils. The angel's body vanished into the hell pit before a large burst of red and orange flame burst from its opening. The chaotic screams of devils erupted from the pit as the flames began to die out and vanish. Soon enough, the pit slowly closed itself, having been fed a proper body to seal it away. I collapsed onto my knees, feeling the drain of the entire situation hit me like a ferocious wave. It was over. It was over at last, but for how long? The entire situation became a chaotic mess. James forced the angel of fate into a pit of hell. Did that mean that James was free? What about the angel? Too many questions rang in my head, but stopped as James landed beside me and knelt down to me, lifting my chin and making me look up at him. He looked worn out, panting for air from the experience, but still had a kind smile. It was so satisfying, feeling James with me. I had barely noticed the black scar on his chest vanish from his skin as I became lost in his eyes in relief. Well, that's a good sign. It... it's over now. I could only nod, feeling the slow growth of elation trickle into my chest as I looked up at James. He was alive, we were still together, and the angel was gone. If it wasn't over, I was sure that other angels would have come at us. I wrapped my arms around James, relieved that everything was over and we were at peace at last. Diana, however, let out a pained gasp from where she had fallen, gripping the open wound on her stomach and panting. James and I looked over in surprise as Diana began coughing out blood and calling out. S Settle! Aw, she is in love with Sarah. Sarah, get your butt in here. On her command, a burst of white light emerged in front of her body before revealing her half-angel guard, looking around him at the new surroundings and locking his sights down at his fallen mistress. Isaiah! Quickly, Sarah dropped to his knees and placed his hand over her wound while he wrapped an arm around her shoulders and back. Diana winced and continued to pant for air, gritting her teeth. What happened? Who did- Shut up and heal me. <laughs> Ask me questions later. Sarah nodded in quick obedience before muttering to himself and closing his eyes. White energy flowed through his hands and into Diana's wound. To my astonishment, the wound slowly began to close and sit together like it was never there. As Diana let out a sigh, she closed her eyes and relaxed into Sarah's arm, laying her head against his upper arm. Sarah let out a breath of relief as well, moving his hand beneath Diana's knees and lifting her up bridal style. James and I stood as soon as Sarah did, facing him as he turned to us and glared hard at James. I gripped onto James's hand, stepping forward to be between the boys as Sarah began to walk towards us. What happened? A lot, actually. There was a lot that went on. We fought an angel. It has been properly disposed of. The air in the room once again chilled as Sarah kept a stare on my husband, a faint white glow surrounding his body. It faded, however, at his mistress's voice. Sarah. Sarah looked down to see Diana looking up at him and bringing a hand up to his cheek. 
The tension in his eyes faded at the sight and feel of her actions, making me release the fearful breath I was holding in. She'll explain, Boo Boo. Without another word against my incubus, Sarah turned and walked around me and James. As he reached the door, however, he turned his head towards us. It would seem that your destiny has been broken. Well done. Sweet! We broke a stone destiny. How do you know this? <laughs> Sarah didn't speak again before leaving us alone. James and I watched him leave before relaxing into each other's arms with me laying my head on James's shoulder. I could only remember Sarah's words as he vanished into the dark of the castle hall. If Sarah was right, then James had enough power to break his stone destiny, and him sending the angel packing only confirmed it. Thank God. It's over. Yes, it is. James and I held each other tightly, taking in the situation. The war was over. The angel hunt for James was apparently over. We were safe now, and we could go home. All we could do now was let out a sigh and cherish the silence that followed. We would go home soon. <laughs>